the Olympus OMD EM1X and the 300mm f4 lens and the Nikon Z7 and 500mm pf lens. They're a similar size, they're a similar weight, but how do they compare in the field for wildlife photography on the go? Welcome to a, something a little bit different. Um, I was watching a couple of videos recently from Simon Wantling and from Espen Helland, who um, both have really cool wildlife photography channels. So if you don't already know those channels, I thoroughly recommend uh, you give them a look. They have both recently been using or testing an Olympus Micro Four Thirds camera setup with their 300mm f4 lens. Now in both cases they were comparing that to a sort of full-size DSLR setup and certainly in the case of uh, Simon's video he was comparing it to his Canon 1D series with a 600mm f4 prime which is an absolute beast. And so when you compare it to something like this, which is small, kind of quite lightweight, certainly very compact, you imagine that there's going to be some big differences in the handling and uh, the kind of feel of using that camera. And I watched that and I thought there's an obvious comparison that needs to be made here. There's an obvious review. And that is to compare this against this. This is my Nikon Z7 with the 500mm PF lens and this is the Olympus OMD EM1X with a 300mm f4 lens on it. And so I wrote to Olympus and uh, asked them whether they'd be interested in uh, making that happen by loaning me some kit and they replied that they were and this kit was in my hand 72 hours later. A bit mental actually because I thought, oh yeah, that'll take a couple of weeks to happen, that would be great. And now it's here and I had lots of other projects and I'm kind of a bit of a, a fluster because crap, I've got to actually get some testing done in the next few days on this now because I've got it for two weeks and uh, then I've got to send it back. But fully awesome that they've actually sent it to me so thank you very, very much. Uh, Olympus for, for doing that and uh, I think it'll be really interesting to try out against my Nikon Z series and the 500mm PF lens. First impressions, this is very compact, very lightweight. The camera is a lot bigger in than the Z7. You can see that from there. Width-wise and sort of depth-wise about the same, but height-wise there you can see that the Olympus is a good deal larger. That's because it has got a grip in the normal orientation and it's got a vertical grip built in with all the buttons where you'd expect them so you can shoot vertically without having to kind of crab your fingers across. Now that might be quite a useful feature. I personally don't really use battery grips. I can't on the Z series anyway because Nikon uh, haven't made one and aren't going to make one. I had one for the uh, 
the D500, but I didn't really use it. Um, I personally feel that Nikon have dropped a ball by not making one for the Z series, because I think a lot of people would buy them. I'd probably buy one, because I'm an idiot, and probably not use it, but that's by the by. There's some nice features on here that I've noticed already. There's um, this integrated uh, lens hood slides into place and just stores there. There's no chance of dropping it and losing it. I must say though that the lens hood on the 500 PF is pretty good. It doesn't come off. There was an integrated Arca Swiss um, mounting on the lens foot, which is something I think all lenses should have. It's just convenient really um, to have that on my 500 PF. I've had to buy a third party lens foot and put it on there because the Nikon one didn't have it. Uh, I've got all the controls on the lens as we'd expect. We've got something for vibration reduction that they call IS image stabilization. We've got a focus range limiter and we've got a lens function button, which I assume something like a memory recall or an autofocus. Um, I haven't actually turned it on yet and found out how to actually use it. That's, to, that's for later. There is a... Uh, Nice little uh, catch here and flap for the dual SD cards, which I'll have to dig out an SD card to test this with because I don't actually use SD cards anymore apart from my wildlife cameras, so I'll have to find one to put in here. Um, it does look like this is very nicely weather sealed. There's a nice gasket all the way around there, so that looks pretty good. It's got two batteries in this compartment here, so I hope that means that it'll have absolutely fantastic battery life. So this is a Micro Four Thirds system camera. And man, that sensor is so small compared to a full frame sensor. When I mounted the lens, I was just stunned by how small it is. For such a massive camera, the sensor is tiny. But uh, what that means is this 300 millimeter lens with that crop factor has the equivalent field of view of a 600 millimeter on a full frame body. Now, this is 500 millimeters on a full frame body. That's not that different in size. And that's why this comparison might be quite interesting. This is an F4 lens, which means in terms of the light gathering, it's going to be the equivalent of an F4 with that field of view of a 600, but it is not going to give the depth of field and the nice out of focus backgrounds that an F4 600 would give. You can't get that for free by just going making the sensor smaller. It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, physics is against you in that case. But as I say, I haven't actually turned it on yet. I have got no idea how to use this camera because it's a different system to anything I've used before. I've been using Nikon cameras for, oh man, 15 years now. Um, I haven't used a different system in that time really at all. So there is gonna be a steep learning curve here. So I'm gonna turn the video camera off now and actually work out how to use this, get the settings right. And when I reckon I can use it and get pictures in a reasonable way, I will take these two out and I'm going to go out for a couple of walks in the local area because we're still in the sort of tail end of uh, COVID-19 lockdown and I will just sort of do the kind of incidental wildlife photography that I do when I'm just wandering about, see what I can find and I'll take photographs of it with both cameras and I'll see how it feels to use this camera and I'll see how it compares both in the feel and ease of use and the image quality compared to the Z7 and the 500PF.
So for some pixel peeping and sort of lower light tests, I thought I'd use my little buddy here, who you might have seen on some previous lens testing videos, uh, especially as it doesn't look like I'm going to get to uh, go and actually visit the beavers uh, this year as it looks. And uh, I'll put him here by the pond. That would be pretty exciting, wouldn't it, to get a, a beaver in the garden pond, but uh, only a toy one. And um, I will set up with the Stead 7 and the 500 PF and the Olympus with the 300mm and I will test them. But I'm also going to test the 300mm 2.8. I'll set it to f4 with the Z7 and try cropping that 50% um, to see how that compares to the output from the Olympus. It occurs to me that that test would be absolutely spot on to do with the 300mm PF lens, the f4 from Nikon, but uh, I don't have that lens, so we'll just have to use the, uh, the bigger 300. It's been an incredibly obliging subject. They're never like that in the field. So I'll take the images up and look at them on the computer and uh, we'll talk through the results. Okay, so the Olympus kit has been sent back and now it's time to talk through the results of my little comparison. Now I do have an admission to make, which is that uh, it's taken me a really long time to get around to editing this part of the video, these conclusions and the sort of image review part. And actually I sent the Olympus kit back nearly two months ago, so my bad. But I took loads of notes and I did all the filming that I needed while I had the kit. But yeah, I've been really, really busy. Um, there are some really big changes about to happen in uh, our lives and uh, if you want to find out more about that, you will need to stay tuned to the channel and watch my next video, which will be from the woods watching beavers, like this guy on the screen. That was an image taken and will appear in that uh, video. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you all about it over a nice cup of coffee at my camp there. But yeah, let's get back to talking about the Olympus kit. A quick disclaimer to make before I get into this. The OMD EM1X is you know, Olympus's top of the line kit, but I'm, I'm no camera reviewer, so I'm sure there are going to be things I've missed, and this is not a full on in depth review of that camera. What this video is, is a comparison in, from, from my own use of the Olympus kit side by side with my Nikon Z7 and 500mm over a two week period. It's probably ending up being quite a long video because there are all sorts of little things to get into, but uh, I'll have made sure to put time code in the description so you can skip about to the different bits where you don't want to kind of listen to me just blethering on. Another point to make is that I hardly tested the Olympus kit for video at all. I used it for a couple of video clips. It worked fine. The, the image stabilization was fantastic, the video quality looked good, the autofocus worked really well, and uh, really I didn't test it beyond that. This is for using it as a sort of stills camera for wildlife on the go, where you want a lightweight setup that still gives you a good reach. So, let's start off with the good points, the things I really liked about the Olympus OMD EM1X and the 300mm f4 lens. First off, build quality and weather sealing. Absolutely brilliant, really good. Really thought that uh, it was solid, it was well sealed, there were lots of good gaskets. It felt like you could probably take it and really abuse it in some bad weather. I didn't, 
because it wasn't my camera. That would feel a little bit rude, but I think it would have uh, been up to that challenge. No bother at all. But that's not really uh, any different to the Z7 and the, uh, the 500. I've taken this out in some pretty disgusting conditions. It's still fine. So I think there's not really a huge difference uh, to be found there. Battery life seemed excellent. Um, it's got two batteries in that body, of course, so that probably helps. I didn't do any video work, as I said, with the Olympus, so really I suspect that uh, I was never going to really push the battery life to any kind of limit. One of the first things I noticed is that the image stabilisation on the Olympus kit is really good. I think it's better than the Nikon, and in fact, I tested it and I could prove that it was better than the Nikon in my usage and my ability to handhold the kit. I was able to take pictures of this rock that I'll show on screen just now at a tenth of a second with the Olympus. I just couldn't with the Nikon. I could get a twentieth of a second, but a tenth of a second I tried lots of times and they were always just that little bit unsharp. Considering the reach, the lens size is remarkable. The fact that this um, is a 300 millimeter, um, obviously for the micro four thirds center, and it's a f4, and it's really small and light, fantastic. It's also really, really sharp, absolutely beautiful lens. I can see why people go for this uh, kit as a portable system, but maybe not with the EM 1X because it's really quite a big camera. So the autofocus, it's fast, it's smart, it's quiet. And uh, yeah, I was very impressed with that. I felt able to lock subjects very easily. I felt able to track subjects and uh, it felt probably easier to track a moving subject with the Olympus than the Nikon. Although when it came to actually taking a photograph of the moving subject, both of them exhibited some uh, EVF lag and it was quite hard to get an image with the subject where I wanted it in the frame. So you had to rely on kind of being a bit further out and then cropping. And of course, if you're relying on cropping, you want more pixels. And then at that point, the Z7 already obviously starts to push ahead. I got the impression that the focusing speed of the um, Olympus 300 millimeter F4 was probably faster than this 500 millimeter PF lens. Now, part of that is the fact that this is an adapted lens on the uh, Nikon Z7 with the FTZ adapter. So yeah, I'd need a native Nikon lens to make that comparison fairly, and I just don't have one. It just doesn't exist, actually. There is no long glass for the Z mount yet. So with really fast subjects like the Sand Martins, which I went and revisited with both cameras, I actually found that the keeper rate was actually very similar between the two systems. So while the Nikon Z7 seemed to hunt more often, when it did get the bird in focus in frame, it absolutely nailed it. Whereas the Olympus kit didn't seem to hunt as much, but a lot more of the images were kind of only just in focus or it just about just missed focus. But in terms of tracking a subject that did make it easier because it was less likely to completely lose the subject so I could lock onto it again more quickly. So now on to the obvious and massive winning point for the Olympus, which is the frame rate. The Olympus body can do it's either 15 or 16 frames a second, mechanical shutter, full autofocus, full auto exposure, tracking everything. And that's literally twice what this can do more than twice. And you can also get 30 frames a second or even 60 frames a second with the settings locked in sort of silent sort of electronic shutter mode, which is absolutely insane. The buffer seemed to be pretty much endless and it means that you can just shoot and shoot and shoot bursts of images and moving subjects and you just increase the chances of capturing that particular gesture from your subject. So that's a really big win. Um, I have definitely noticed moving from my D500, which had 10 frames a second, to the 
Z7, which with everything working, I think it gets six. So that's a real difference. So playing with a camera that was getting 15, I was like, oh yeah, this is the business. And as if the fast shutter speed was not enough, it has also got an inbuilt time machine that they call Pro Capture. And it's absolutely magic. It's a brilliant feature. And you half press the shutter and the camera actually starts to record frames into the buffer. And then when you fully press the shutter, it records some of those frames to the card and a continuous burst from then on until you release. And what that means, of course, is that if you're sitting waiting for a particular moment, some action to happen, you're no longer at the mercy of predicting it or at the mercy of your shutter lag and your uh, reaction time to capture the action. You've already captured the action, but yeah, it's like a time machine. It's really, really cool. I played with it and that was by far my favorite feature of the Olympus kit because it's unlike anything that the, the Nikon kit can do. It's just, yeah, really cool. So the last point in this list of uh, awesome features that I liked on the Olympus is the thing called the super menu, which is accessed on the back uh, screen of the camera. And it's a bit like the eye menu in the Nikon kit where you can look at the um, a certain set of your settings as little icons and you can change them. But it's far more in-depth. It's got more information in it than the Nikon one. And I really like it. And it's a good job too, because when it comes to the rest of the menu system, we're going to need to go on to the other list, which is the things that I didn't like quite so much. But first, here is another wee disclaimer. I'm going to put lots of these in because otherwise I'll get lots of comments about the obvious kind of things that I've missed. But I mean, feel free to comment anyway. But I'm aware that, that I've missed things. I am aware that there will be things that uh, I've got wrong because this is just from my use of the camera for really quite a short time. But yeah, the menus. I'm sorry, Olympus, but the menus are horrible. I really, really didn't like them. Now, I'm sure some people look uh, at the Nikon menu system and say, oh, that's disgusting, I don't like it. But at least you can read the words. So yeah, I mentioned uh, framing and cropping a minute ago in the good points when I was talking about uh, keeping the subject in frame. Well, that's good because you can't crop as much. You don't have the resolution of the Nikon Z7 in that Olympus camera. Now, I would imagine that it's going to be pretty hard for manufacturers to make a Micro Four Thirds camera with a resolution approaching that of the Z7 because the pixels would have to be really, really tiny and then you'd have problems with the, uh, with the light gain. But yeah, the ability to crop and still maintain a good resolution is obviously a lot lower than I have with the Z7. There's no surprise there, but in terms of my usage, I definitely have got used to having all those pixels available to me, both for cropping and also, as we'll come to a little bit later in this video, things like noise reduction. So probably my biggest gripe with this lens was the way the manual focus and autofocus are uh, was disconnected. Let me explain what uh, what I mean. On my Nikon Z7 and 500mm PF, well it's really the lens isn't it, but it's the Nikon system. I've got what's called full-time manual override on the autofocus. So I focus on something using the back button here and I want to just tweak focus. I can just touch the focus ring and I can move it like this. And I really like that because that's really convenient. Now, I don't know whether there was a setting for this that I just missed, but on the Olympus kit, there's a collar on the lens that you have to move forward to engage manual focus mode. So already you're having to do a second process to get into manual, and that's a bit of an issue for me. But the real problem was that it seemed that when I engaged into that manual mode, the focus position would change. It was almost like it had a focus position for the manual ring and a different focus position for the automatic system. 
and that meant I couldn't just interchange between manual and auto to quickly tweak the focus and I found that really really annoying. <laughs> to be honest I had simply thought that full-time manual override was standard that basically all manufacturers and all systems basically had that that had um, silent wave motor lenses but I might be wrong. The system is compact and light but I'll be honest I did not like the balance of the camera because that Olympus body is so big I found that the whole um, whole kit was really sort of back heavy that's me and that's my usage of the camera and also as I've said a couple of times already in terms of this direct comparison what I probably should have got was one of the smaller but kind of newer Olympus Micro Four Thirds bodies, not the EM1X. So finally we come to what is for me the obvious shortfall that the Micro Four Thirds camera is going to have over the full frame and that is sensor noise and the ISO range. There is noticeable noise already at ISO 800 on the Olympus kit. Now to be fair there is some noise on the Z7 as well at ISO 800 and if we want to talk about cleanness of image in the Nikon ecosystem we also have the Z6 which I'm actually talking to right now and that has got much cleaner images just out of the gate although I'm going to say something controversial now but it's not about the Olympus if you're going head to head in low light of say a wildlife subject and you take the same photo with the Z6 and the Z7 there's a good chance that by the time you've applied your noise reduction um, that the Z7 image is going to actually have more detail preserved in it just because you've got so many more pixels for the noise reduction to, to use. Slightly controversial because everybody says that the uh, Nikon Z6 is the one you want for low light and uh, for wildlife photography and the like whereas I actually find that as long as you can get a sharp shot the Z7 will produce an image that you can get much more detail out of when you take it to the computer afterwards. But anyway this is not a review of these two cameras we're talking about the Olympus kit here and the real limitation is that the top ISO on the Olympus kit is 6400. Now here in gloomy rainy Scotland if you're going out doing wildlife photography and you're likely to be out late at night or early early in the morning that's going to be a problem actually because there are plenty of situations where you need to push it beyond that. That brings us neatly on to some image quality comparisons and pixel peeping. So we'll zoom into some of these test images and have a look at the, uh, the sharpness and the sort of detail in the in focus areas and the quality of the out of focus areas. So first let's look at ISO 64. That's the base ISO for the Nikon and actually it's a low setting on the Olympus. I took three images with the relevant camera settings so there's one with the Nikon Z7 and the 500mm PF, there's one with the Nikon Z7 and the 300mm set to f4 and there's one with the Olympus kit and there will be um, time code in the description to all of these different comparison images and comparison composites so you can skip about between them as you like. So both cameras produce images with loads of detail and loads of contrast and uh, yeah the 500 millimeter lens on the Nikon Z7 produces the crispest image at the one-to-one -one crop and it's closer to the beaver due to the higher resolution. Looking at the out of focus rock behind the beaver's head all three images are very clean very little noise there and here are the same two images at uh, two to one because as I said it's hard to tell the differences uh, at uh, 1080p YouTube resolution. So next we have ISO 200. This is base ISO for the Olympus setup and uh, again we have the same three images and really there's very little change in the story from ISO 64. 
as we could probably have predicted, these are high-end cameras and the difference between ISO 64 and 200 is not a lot. Let's crank the ISO right up to 1000. And here we definitely start to see some noise. But there's still a lot of detail and the images are all pretty good. And to be honest, I was surprised. I thought the Olympus would start to show problematic noise earlier. But while there's noise in these images, it's not that distracting. Taking the ISO even further up to 4000, we start to see a lot of noise and the Nikon starts to have a clear edge over the Olympus, in my opinion, in the in-focus regions, while the out-of-focus regions, the noise is actually pretty similar. Now we go right up to ISO 6400 and this is the maximum gain on the Olympus and the noise is really pretty strong and the, and the image is in fact a little bit soft. The Nikon images are also noisy but not as badly so and of course the Nikon can keep going. That's one of the major winning points here for it is here's an image at 12,800 ISO which is a full stop more gain which of course is the difference between the Olympus's f4 lens and my Nikon 500mm 5.6. The image here is clearly quite noisy, but there's still a lot of detail that can be used for noise reduction. But before we talk about that, and while we're here pixel peeping, let's quickly talk about depth of field, because that's another thing that is a difference between a micro four thirds sensor and full frame. Here are the three images set to the same field of view, and what we're specifically looking at are the out of focus rocks and leaves behind the beaver. The Olympus 300 millimeter f4 on the Micro Four Thirds sensor is giving the same depth of field and level of blurriness to the background as the Nikon 500mm is on a full frame sensor at f8. So two stops different in terms of that uh, depth of field. And that's quite important in terms of your composition and what you actually get when you're out and about. And it's all to do with that crop factor because when you take the Nikon image with 300mm at f4, and you crop it to 50% and you compare it side by side, you actually get exactly the same depth of field as you do with the Olympus. So it's all the crop factor. They're producing the same image when it comes to the back of the, uh, of the sensor plane, but because the sensor is larger on the full frame one, you're getting what seems like a difference in the depth of field. So let's talk about noise reduction and what we might be able to do to save some of those really noisy images. Clearly there is a need to remove noise, especially if you shoot in low light a lot, as I find myself doing, regardless of what camera system you have. And luckily, I use a fantastic piece of software called uh, Topaz Denoise AI. It removes noise far better than you can in Lightroom or any of the other programs I've used. Really very impressive. I ran some of these uh, noisy test images through the software just to see how well the details could be recovered just using the suggested settings and their low light mode. So here are the same images as before at ISO 1000 and here they are after some noise reduction and the images are all pretty clean now. The software has done an absolutely fantastic job. At ISO 4000 here are the originals again and with noise reduction. And the software has done a good job again, but it has to be said that there is still a little bit more noise in the Olympus than the Nikon that hasn't been removed by the software. And here are the ISO 6400 images again. And here they are after some noise reduction. Now the Nikon Z7 images have cleaned up really rather nicely, but I'm afraid the noise in the Olympus image was probably too much for the software because it has not managed to remove it. So this is really where the Olympus uh, EM1X starts to fall short of the Nikon because while well, they can both shoot at this high, high ISO, the Olympus has simply not got enough detail in that image for the noise reduction to kind of work its magic and pull the detail back out of. Just to show that the Nikon still has uh, headroom at these high ISO values, here's the uh, ISO 
12,800 image again. And here it is after some noise reduction. And this is really not bad at all. In fact, it's almost less noisy or equal to the ISO 6400 image from the Olympus even after noise reduction. So I guess this is to do with the full frame sensor having more pixels and more dynamic range because it's just more forgiving in the noise reduction and I guess there's just more information there for the algorithm to play with and pull out the details. But anyway, it's pretty insane actually thinking back 10 years how far camera sensor technology has come that either of these cameras can do this because it certainly couldn't when I first got digital SLRs. Not a chance. <laughs> so uh, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive stuff. So in conclusion, I got some really quite nice images with the Olympus kit while I was doing my opportunistic uh, walk around wildlife photography with it. And yeah, it's a hell of a piece of kit. It's really good. I'm impressed. I can really see why uh, people are making the switch from the from the kind of low weight of that uh, 300 millimeter lens. And I can really see the draw in terms of those high frames per second and the pro capture feature, which is just magic, actually, <laughs> really cool. And the image stabilization and focusing are probably a little better than my Nikon kit as well. But it's not for me. I already have a lightweight wildlife photography setup in my Nikon Z7 and my 500 millimeter PF lens. And I'm very, very happy with it. My higher resolution setup gives me more ability to crop and more pixels for noise reduction software to chew on, which is important here in Scotland doing wildlife photography because uh, low light is pretty much the norm when the exciting stuff happens. The better autofocus tracking is something I hope Nikon will continue to address in firmware updates. Over the time I've had the Z7, it has come on night and day compared to when I first got it. And uh, yeah, I guess one day too, Nikon will bring out a uh, camera in the Z line with a really good high frames per second. And uh, yeah, maybe it'll even have something like Pro Capture. And in that case, I'd probably be quite tempted to upgrade. So I better start saving. But as I've already said, the Olympus OMD EM one X with their 300 millimeter F4 lens make a fantastic combination for wildlife photography on the go. If I didn't already have a compact system as I do, I would be quite interested. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something like that, especially if you're moving from a, a full sort of DSLR setup and you're not too worried about super low light performance, then I can thoroughly recommend it. Although actually, if you want lightweight, there are other Olympus bodies than the EM1X that are smaller, but also have the resolution and the frame rate. So I'd probably look at them if it was me. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful or interesting or both. Please uh, feel free to leave a comment. Tell me what I've missed. If you have experience of these uh, two setups as a comparison, tell me what you found. And uh, yeah, feel free to ask any further questions you have. I'll try to answer them. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos where I take my Nikon kit out in the field to do wildlife photography and the occasional kit review like this one, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again to Olympus for sending me the camera to look at. That was fantastic of them. It was really cool that they uh, were willing to send me that uh, loan unit. And thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Mounting dots in the wrong place, I don't like it. <laughs>